Lightroom and Camera Raw both have a select subject option. So our, our raw editors in the Adobe world have something called select subject. But the main Photoshop interface with layers and layer masks and all that also has select subject. So what's the difference? Are they the same? Are they different? I thought that'd make a great little topic to just dive in and see how precise one is worth the worse versus the other and, uh, and give you a couple guidelines on when you may want to use each one of those. So let's go ahead and jump in here. A uh, couple things as we get started, I, I think it's important to tell you how to how I set this up because you could be looking at this wondering how do you even get these masks to compare because the masks that we create when we're here inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw, the masks that we create can't be saved in any way and brought into Photoshop, okay? So what I did is I went into Lightroom, I did select subject, I zoomed in a little bit and I just had to take a screen capture. Okay, I took a screen capture, brought it into Photoshop. I brought that same photo into Photoshop and then I did select subject under the select menu. Uh, you're gonna see something pop up in the corner of this video. You'll see a link in the description. I have a small tip on how to make select subject better in Photoshop, so make sure you watch that um, if you don't already know how because it's important to get the best selection there. So I did that, I filled it with white and then filled the background, reversed it, filled the background with black, which then gave us a little bit of what we see here. Also just know that everything that we're doing here, if you can do inside a camera raw, it's exactly the same. Go to your masking tool, go to select subject. Those select subjects are exactly the same in camera raw as in Lightroom. I also have a person with some hair, so we can have a couple examples to compare it to. We'll jump over to the one with the fur there. Not totally scientific, but it's as close as we can get and it's good enough. And when I look at them, I see the left side with the Photoshop version and I see, to me, looks like a contrastier edged selection. Okay, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Just look around the edges there. Okay, you can compare a little bit about what you see over here to about what you see over there. A uh, good place to compare to right up there versus right up there. That's a really good comparison spot. So I see an overall contrastier edged selection in Photoshop than I do in Lightroom. What I see in Lightroom is more of a cloudy transition between the subject and some of those edges of first. So what do I mean by cloudy? Do you see that gradiated area inside of there? So that's, you know, we, we know that white is selected, black is not selected. When you see gray, that's semi-selected. So technically what you would see if we made an adjustment to this inside of Lightroom, you might see some spillover or a little bit of glow in that area here. You can see it a lot. As I scroll around, I'll zoom in a little bit more. As I scroll around this edge, you'll just see a lot of cloudy types of areas inside of there, okay? It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I'm actually gonna show you a tip toward the end where if this does happen to you, again, it's because I, I, I don't think you should change your workflow. To me, the Photoshop edge does look more accurate, but only more accurate in terms of if I wanted to cut this out and paste it onto another background. Um, where this one, I would get a little bit of, a little bit, of, I think a little bit of glow on the edges here. I wouldn't get as much of that glow on the edges there. So, and that's really what you would do in Photoshop, right? You would, you would cut it out, you would change the background to some way, put it on a different background, whatever that would be. Um, you wouldn't just make it brighter or darker, that would be something you do inside of Lightroom or Camera Raw. So when we jump over to the hair, same thing. I cut off the left side just so we could get this closer and see them. So you can see the Photoshop version on the left, the Lightroom version on the right. Again, Lightroom would also be camera raw. And I see some areas where the hair almost gets cut out. You can see it faded on a lot of edges where you see the Lightroom version pulls in a lot more hair, right? And a lot, it's, it, it doesn't really fade on the edges like you see some of these areas fade inside of Photoshop. Now, the other interesting thing is, is keep in mind in this photo, that hair is blurred, okay? That's depth of field back there. You will never get a perfect selection from blurred edges, okay? It's impossible. So you need sharp edges. So you need to, you, you have very imperfect uh, type of, 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 of object there. You need to uh, just understand you're gonna get imperfect results if you try to cut this out perfectly. Uh, you probably won't be successful, but it does give us enough to work with that you can see Photoshop's trying to fade away some of those edges. We're over here, it's, it's not, it's keeping a lot of those edges. And you can also see some of that cloudiness I was talking about between the transitional areas. 
Okay, you see a lot of gray in there, which means it's partially selected. Now, where where would that where would that start to manifest itself? Well, if you're doing making an adjustment to the subject or its background in Lightroom or Camera Raw, you could see a little bit of a glow. Does that mean you should switch over to Photoshop and start using adjustment layers to make your subject or your background brighter or dark? No, it's a huge step backwards. So I do have a, a little tip for you that I think would, would work just fine if you ever do see it. But first, I do have a very quick word from our sponsor, which is I, I jumped into Photoshop here. I do have a Photoshop how-to course, which has been an incredibly popular course, very affordable course. And it's the kind of thing that if you got the basics of Photoshop down, you don't want a beginner's course. You just want to know how to do stuff, okay? Um, and you don't want to necessarily get 20 different answers on how to do things because then that gets you working in all different ways. So in this course, it's a very condensed way how to do things. You get the same workflow from the same person. Um, there's a ton of how to's in there, everything from selections, masking, replacing backgrounds, noise reduction, sharpening, restoring old photos, making signatures. There's a ton of stuff in there. The website will tell you everything you need to know, but I do hope you'll swing by and check that one out because um, if you want to, that is the next level in Photoshop. Once you know the tools, to do things. It's how to do things that get you better and better at Photoshop, more familiar with those things so that, uh, you know, the next time a project comes up, you already know, kind of hit the ground running and you can move on. As far as what we were talking about here, and this is, this is how I, I, I wouldn't change your workflow when it comes to this. Okay. I'm going to do, if I wanted to select the subject here and maybe make this bear a little bit darker, I'm still going to do that inside of Lightroom. All right. Now, I just made it a little bit darker. Let's say you made it really dark just just to, to make a point. What I do, if I have an odd edge, and you can actually see what we saw looking at these masks take place, look how far that edge goes out. Okay, this was the Lightroom version. Remember how we saw it was a bigger mask. Well, if I had to do this, again, this doesn't look natural, I would just go to subtract with the brush. I would make sure my brush feather setting was set all the way up to 100, get a pretty big brush with that. See the difference between those inner and outer rings? That's the feathered version. And I'm just gonna hit the right bracket key, make it even bigger. And I'm just gonna go around that edge and very, very quickly, you don't have to spend a lot of time on it. I'm just gonna go around that edge and let that feathered portion of the brush just kind of chip away at it. And you can still get a very, very realistic selection. A couple things I would say here would be, you know, if if you're doing what I did here, expect it to look fake. You're doing you're doing something that's very very unnatural to the photo to change the the overall brightness and darkness so severely that you see an edge. You saw when we didn't change it severely, we don't really notice any edge in there. So that'd be the first thing is don't make a change that looks like it's a sticker pasted on top of something, and then from there, I would say. If you needed to replace somebody's background, that's a job for Photoshop, but that's a job from the start for Photoshop, right? You can do some basic editing inside of Lightroom, but Lightroom can't layer, Lightroom can't replace backgrounds. It can't do any of that stuff. So you would have to use Photoshop to begin with. And if you needed that perfect of a precise edge, which unless you're replacing a background, you typically don't need, um, then I think that would be a great place for Photoshop. And lastly, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about masking, I've got another free video uh, right here. So it's a great place to go. There's another little masking tip inside of there, one of my favorite tools. So if you're looking to kind of delve into the masking inside of Lightroom Camera Raw a little bit more, that's a great place to go next.